All right, everyone, so let's talk about the terrorist attack that just took place outside of the Kabul airport. 13 American servicemen were murdered, and at least 90 Afghan uh, civilians were murdered in this attack. Now, the attack was not done by the Taliban. It was done by a group that calls itself the Islamic State of Khorasan, or ISK. Khorasan is a reference to an ancient region, Greater Khorasan, which consisted of parts of Iran, Afghanistan, and parts of Central Asia. The region was obviously eventually um, Islamized, and it is a very, uh, uh, it's a place that has very strong historic ties to the Islamic religion. I mean, given the fact that the people who live in Khorasan today, or what, what used to be Khorasan, are Muslim today. So these people who founded the ISK, the Islamic State of Khorasan, uh, these people uh, are, a lot of them are actually former uh, members of the Taliban. The group formed in 2014 and was founded by people who were members of the Taliban, but they thought that the Taliban was not hardcore enough, it wasn't trad enough, it wasn't Islamic enough. So they went out and they found their own, uh, they, they founded their own thing and they pledged allegiance to, uh, to ISIS and they pledged allegiance to uh, the guy who was uh, the leader of ISIS, uh, Abu Bakr. And so they said, you know, ISIS is actually more Islamic. You know, they kill people more than you do. The Taliban has become weak and, and all, all this stuff. So they, they, they founded this, uh, this terrorist organization and they have done uh, attacks. And this is the biggest attack, attack that they have done so far. And uh, they murdered dozens upon dozens of people. What I find very interesting is the fact that this attack took place right outside the spot the area that the Turks want to control. The Turks want to uh, have a military presence in the Kabul airport. NATO wants this. This is not just some kind of fringe idea that popped up out of Ankara or Istanbul. This is, this is really a part of NATO policy. Uh, 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 the Germans want it. The Americans want it. They, they want the Turks to have a, a military presence in Afghanistan, specifically in the Kabul airport. This is, of course, for strategic reasons. The Kabul airport is your only way out of that hellhole if you are stuck in that country, God forbid. Uh, if you are a diplomat and you want to go to Afghanistan to do some sort of negotiation with the Taliban, and this is the, this is the initial plan. Uh, things may change. Things will change, but this is the the plan on paper. You know, in order to work with the Taliban, in order to somehow make the Taliban less worse, or to keep some sort of diplomatic ties with the Taliban, so as to have some sort of uh, uh, have some sort of diplomatic uh, 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 leverage over them. Uh, diplomats, uh, government representatives, NATO representatives need a way to get into Afghanistan and get the hell out of Afghanistan. And the only way to do that is through the Kabul airport. So the Kabul airport is a very important place to control. Uh, that's how you're going to get out of that place. It's like a horror movie where the family is stuck in a town and everyone is crazy and everybody wants to murder you, but they can't get out. Afghanistan is like that, but it's a whole country. And there's good people there, don't get me wrong, but it's not a place that you really want to be in. And I mean, the Afghans themselves don't want to be there. So... You got to have the airport secured. It is quite obvious, but the Turks want to control the airport for uh, uh, for a reason other than what is uh, stated in the you know in, in NATO diplomacy. It's not just about securing the airport so that diplomats can have a way to get in and get out. Um, it's a way to project uh, soft power so as to demonstrate uh, an immense geopolitical leverage on the part of Turkey. Uh, in order to show the Islamic world that Turkey is the top dog. Uh, Turkey is the only Islamic country in NATO. At the same time, Turkey is the second most armed country in NATO. So it's pretty crazy. Uh, and be, but, but because of Turkey's position, Turkey has this huge influence over the Islamic world because of its military prowess, its military capacity, its economic capacity. And it's, uh, it's very uh, uh, advantageous position within NATO. I want to read to you guys a quote from Al Jazeera where it talks about how Turkey it wants to control the airport, wants to have a military presence in the airport as a, way to, as a way to project soft power and as a way to project Turkish power to the rest of the world. 
And it's really a way to flex itself. It's flexing itself to the Muslim world, demonstrating its strength and its geopolitical position. And it's also a way for Turkey to overshadow or to eclipse Saudi Arabia. Because in the Islamic world, it's all about Saudi Arabia. Why? Because that's where Mecca is. Mecca is the most, uh, is the most holy site in the Islamic religion. You guys all know that. So the problem, though, is that Saudi Arabia is ran by a bunch of uh, a bunch of people, you know, a bunch of people who live in luxury. A lot of them are pedophiles. They're into sex trafficking, sex slavery. They got golden toilets. Uh, they're, they, they're more focused on their, their cars, their Lamborghinis, BMWs, whatever, than they are in the actual Islamic religion. Uh, most of these people in the royal family aren't even religious. And so this, this has sparked the ire and the hatred of the Islamic world towards Saudi Arabia. In comes Turkey. Turkey says, no, we're better than Saudi Arabia. To hell with the Saudis. Uh, we are going to lead the, uh, the Islamic world. Of course, a lot of this has, a, has historical roots. You know, when the Ottoman Empire was in existence, the Ottoman Empire was an enemy of the Arabs. The Arabs, with the help of the British during the First World War, fought against the Ottoman Empire and defeated the Ottoman Empire uh, as a proxy of the British. And, um, you know, it, it came to the point where the Ottomans actually bombed the Kaaba. So the, Ka the Ottomans care more about preserving their own power than they do uh, the, the Islamic religion. So let me just read to you guys this quote from Al Jazeera. Moreover, in recent years, Ankara had various foreign policy moves aimed at sidelining Saudi Arabia and positioning Turkey as the new leader of the Sunni Muslim world. It actively participated in regional conflicts such as the Syrian war against Saudi Arabia and its allies and has been vocal in its criticism of Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia, on various issues from the Qatar blockade to the assassination of Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, Turkish efforts to maintain a continued presence in post-U.S. Afghanistan by becoming the gatekeeper of the Kabul airport are in part an extension of these geopolitical ambitions. By insisting on assuming a major role in post-U.S. Afghanistan, Erdogan wants not only to challenge Saudi Arabia's leadership of the Sunni Muslim world, but also demonstrate Turkey's soft power capabilities to the wider international community. So there's been a little bit of confusion going on, uh, and this has a lot to do with the media. And I hate to sound like one of these righties who just, you know, who has this broad generalized stroke for the media just calling it the media like it's this big bad leviathan and it's all the same thing but there has been confusion reported in the media so you hear these stories and, and not necessarily fault not necessarily the fault of the media maybe it's more so the the um the uh the type of communication that's coming out of Ankara. But there's been some uh, confusion on whether or not Turkey is actually going to go uh, go through with the plan of having a military presence in the Kabul airport. So, uh, Turkey just recently talked about um, removing its troops, withdrawing its troops from the Kabul airport. And there was an article that came out, I think it was on the Financial Times, that stated that, well, this is a sign that Turkey is going to scrap its plan to protect the airport. Um, but now you have this terrorist attack. So now what are you going to do? Turkey, this is a perfect opportunity for Turkey to now justify its plan. And now, because of this violent attack, very violent attack, um, the Americans definitely want this plan to go through. NATO definitely wants this plan to go through. So this attack has provided an amazing opportunity. Now there are also reports, and there's this 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 was actually reported today, that or yesterday actually. Uh, regardless, the Taliban supposedly reportedly contacted Turkey, saying we want to work with you to protect the airport. This this was actually reported on multiple publications. The Taliban told Turkey, we want to work with you to protect the airport. Now understand this. The terrorist organization that did this attack, that did this massacre outside of the airport, was supposedly not the Taliban. It was done by this group that calls itself the Islamic State of Khorasan. So you can't, technically, you can't blame the Taliban, right? For all, but, you know, for, yeah, political sabotage is very, very tricky. And you have something called the strategy of tension. Strategy of tension is a real term. 
It was a term that was uh, coined by Italian intelligence for in the Cold War for the Gladio operation. A strategy of tension is when you cause a terrorist attack, sparking tension, and then using that tension to justify some sort of political policy. That's the strategy. So you have the tension, the bomb attack, but then you have the 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 taking advantage or the capitalizing upon that disastrous event. That's the strategic element of it. And so for all we know, this uh, Islamic State of Khorasan still has some kind of connections with the Taliban. It's founded by ex-Taliban members, and this could be some sort of a setup to help the Turks. I don't know. What I do know is that this terrorist attack provides a perfect opportunity for Turkey to now solidify its case for having a military presence in the Kabul airport, which is going to provide an immense advantage, geopolitically speaking, to Turkey. Because now Turkey has the justification. It has a cold-cut case for itself. Why it should have its military presence in the Kabul airport. And if... and and. The, 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 another thing I should add is that the Turkish Taliban relationship could move further. It could extend. Now, there's two different things that could happen. One is that Turkey could turn on the Taliban because the Taliban, remember, remember, it's being reported that the Taliban is saying, Turkey, we want your help. But once the Americans leave, we don't want your help anymore. We're going to control the airport. Now, it's possible that this statement really comes from a place of sincerity, and there is truly a tension between Turkey and the Taliban. And eventually, this tension is just going to erupt to full-blown violence, and the Turks are going to have to fight the Taliban, and they're going to get help from other NATO countries. That's a possibility. But the other possibility, and this may be the more plausible one, is that Turkey works in conjunction with the Taliban, collaborates with the Taliban, and they work together. And the Taliban could then say, Turkey is our guy. Turkey is the most powerful country in the Islamic world. We have to work with Turkey. We're going to fight against ISIS. And we're going to, um, we're going to have a, a partnership with them. And then Turkey could use the Taliban as some sort of a proxy to advance Turkish interests within Afghanistan. And then from there, Turkey could bring in more troops to Afghanistan. Turkey could invite other NATO countries to come into Afghanistan. Let's not forget, Turkey wants to work with Hungary and Pakistan in Afghanistan. So whatever's going to happen, it's going to be very interesting. I hate to use that word. I mean, a lot of innocent people have died. But it's it, the whole situation is going to unravel itself. Whatever happens, you're going to be seeing uh, a strong Turkish presence in Afghanistan. And what you are actually seeing right now is the beginning of of a Turkish presence in Central Asia. It's the, it's the beginning of a Turkish presence presence in Central Asia. Remember what I said uh, a while back ago, not too long after the war between the Armenians and the Azerbaijanis. It's amazing that I'm talking like this, like right after the war. I mean, we're supposed to be living in a peaceful time where when everyone has an iPhone and you know the idea of war is just old and primitive. But here I am talking about a war that just took place in the South Caucasus. I mean, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But after the war between the Armenians and the Azeris over Nagorno-Karabakh, I not too long after that conflict was over and that's a temporary over i did a video saying i did a video explaining why turkey is so interested in the south caucasus why is turkey so interested in using azerbaijan as a proxy remember all azeri soldiers have the turkish flag embedded on their uniforms the turkish flag is on their uniforms why because the azeris say that turkey and azerbaijan is one nation Two different governments, two different states. One nation, two states. So they consider themselves an extension of Turkey. Turkey, through Azerbaijan, now has direct access into the Caspian Sea. Direct access into the Caspian Sea. And right across the Caspian Sea is what? From Baku, what's right across the Caspian Sea? Central Asia. And I talked about how Turkey has strong interest in expanding itself into Central Asia. People were saying that I was crazy. You had Turkish trolls laughing at me. Now it's happening. It's happening. 
It's crazy. It's happening. You're seeing it right before your eyes. And of course, Turkey can't do this alone, but it's going to need other countries to help Turkey. It's going to need other countries to help it. This is where the rest of the Islamic world comes in. This is where maybe some non-Islamic countries like Hungary come in. And remember, the Ottoman Empire and the Austro-Hungarian Empire were allies, so that actually makes sense. But it's just so crazy to see what's happening. You're seeing the beginning of the Neo-Ottoman Empire. Now, I used to say the revival of the Ottoman Empire. And for the most part, that's true. But now I actually want to change my terminology. I just want to say you're seeing the formation of the Neo-Ottoman Empire. Because the Ottoman Empire did not control Afghanistan. The Ottoman Empire did not control Central Asia. The Ottoman Empire controlled the Middle East. And it controlled the Balkans at one point in time. It didn't control Afghanistan. So you're seeing a new empire. It's the revival of the Ottoman Empire to, to for the most part, to a great extent. But because of the fact that Turkey is expanding into Central Asia now, you're seeing a, a new empire. It's something else. So you are seeing the, the development, the creation. The, you're seeing the, uh, the gradual formation of the Neo-Ottoman Empire. It's, it's crazy. And what's crazy, crazy is that for all these decades, we were told about what Al-Qaeda and the Taliban and 9-11... And now, now people are talking about the Taliban as if it's some kind of legitimate country. You're, you're, you're hearing people in the United States talking about, well, we got, you know, we're, we're going to have to have diplomatic ties with the Taliban. The Trump administration made a freaking deal with the Taliban. The Trump administration was hating on the Obama administration because the Obama administration did a deal with Iran. And they were saying, oh, how could Obama trust the Iranians? How could they do this deal? This is crazy. But yet Trump did a deal with the Taliban. Trump had, a, had the Taliban deal. Trump supposedly trusted the Taliban. And look at, what's, I mean, look, look at what's been happening. So the whole world is changing. I mean, the whole world is changing. Most Americans don't even care about what's happening in Afghanistan. Maybe now a lot of them do because there's, you know, 13 Americans died. But, I mean, if it was just the 90-something, 90-plus Afghans who were killed, pe most people wouldn't give a damn about this. Most Americans don't care about Afghanistan. Um, even before America declared that it was going to leave, I mean, most Americans did not care about Afghanistan. Uh, the whole world has changed, and it's changed as it, the world changes as, as new generations grow up and, and actually have a voice in society. And the new generations, the Zoomers especially, um, they don't know anything about 9-11. Uh, they don't care about the Taliban, Al-Qaeda. They don't even know anything about the Holocaust. So as the generations, as the new generations grow up, because at least with my generation, and I don't want to sound like a boomer, but I'm 30, I'm... I'm almost I'm I'm going to be 31 next month. And at least with my generation, you know, we were told about the Holocaust, things like that, 9/11, blah blah blah. blah. You know, I, I was 11 years old when 9/11 happened. So it's fresh in my memory. But for the Zoomer generation, they were either, I mean, they were like what, 2 years old, 4 years old when it happened. Maybe they maybe they weren't even born yet. Um and God help us when generation alpha gets old enough that's that's the generation after the zoomers so the, as gen, as the younger generations get older so the world becomes more and more radically changed and it's going to shift to different directions into ways that man we can't even comprehend god knows what's going to happen because they, they don't they have little to no root to the to the recent past they're they're just gonna they're just gonna pour out with crazy enthusiasm for ideas that we all know are crazy and destructive, and 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 they're also gonna have tremendous indifference to things like the Taliban. Like they don't even give a damn. Like, Taliban, who cares? So as time goes on, things that would have been considered unthinkable two decades ago, three decades ago, are gonna seem more and more acceptable to much of the public it's crazy anyway i've said enough you guys just heard some theo logic god bless